Today I have to figure out what exactly I wanna work on. I don't know if you remember this from previous vlogs, but I've been kind of floating around trying to think of what side projects I should pick up on the weekend. So this morning is gonna be dedicated to trying to figure out what to do, and also working on another side project, the little mini fun thing, where I try to get AI to play Pokemon. I don't know if you've seen this, but Anthropic, when they released Claude 3.7, Sonnet also used Claude to play Pokemon as kind of a benchmark to see how good the LLM does. Right now it's been stuck in Mount Moon in Pokemon Red, or Fire Red, I don't remember, for 73 hours, which is a really long time. But it did beat one gym at least, I think. I think it beat the first gym. And I want to see if I can replicate this with ChatGPT 3 Let me show you really quick the progress I've made towards that. I only spent like 30 minutes on it last night. But basically so far we have Pokemon Fire Red in an emulator window. And then in another window, we're gonna have a program running that's gonna continually take screenshots. So please focus, please focus. That's gonna continually take screenshots, break the game state into a little bit of a grid. And then this information is gonna be sent over to Claude and Claude is then gonna figure out what to do. Send back a list of key presses. We're gonna press those key presses and then send back the updated game state. And then eventually, or hopefully, Claude can beat, or not Claude, sorry, O3 can beat the first gym and then we can see how much progress we can make from there. That's my fun little side project. But if you remember, there were a couple of other things I was working on. I was working on two mobile apps, both of which I think are actually kind of boring now. They're not technically complex to build, so I'm not having fun building them. And I'm not using them a ton, so I'm not really feeling the urge to market them, which is fine. There's no need to market them, but I'm gonna continue to do a little bit of that anyways. They're doing okay. Then the other thing I was working on was an AI tutor. Now the main problem with this, for me, is that as I see these LLMs improving straight up, I realize that personally, I get a lot more value out of just asking Claude to make some sort of an artifact or a 3D web page or an artifact to explain some concept to me than if I was asking it to do something via a Manum animation. I just don't think that this is a long-term project that'll last in the next year. Now, of course, you'll probably be able to get away with some sort of customer lock-in as time progresses because, hey, these people are used to your UI and interface, but I don't think that if you have a model that is really, really great at writing code just from the UI itself, it makes much sense to make a wrapper. The key thing here is that I don't think the AI tutor is one, fast enough right now, and B, is just not something that I personally would use a ton so I'm gonna put that on the back burner. But I think there may be some other ways to do ed tech that are useful, and maybe there is a version of the AI tutor that is unique and useful that can just be done by the existing ChatGPT or Claude UI. The main problem seems to be that I just don't have a lot of ideas up here. And I think it's because a lot of the kindlings of ideas that I get, I kind of just discard as not being good enough. Now the problem is, that maybe I should just pursue some of these not good enough ideas if they're personally interesting enough to me. The list of ideas that I have written down here, making the AI tutor actually unique plus useful. And there's some ways that you could do that, maybe not ignoring, maybe ignoring the man animation part for now and not making the forefront of the application, making animations to teach concepts, but making it some sort of AI curriculum generator or complete AI teacher, where you go from topic, you get a complete curriculum with spaced repetition, homework, all of that cool jazz. The thing is there are quite a few people doing that and it's kind of crowded. Now I'm not scared of competition, but I am scared of being bored because once I lose interest in a project, that's it. There will be no more work done for that or very little. I think I can have, I have enough discipline to get the project from zero to one. That is get it out of the door. But after that, if I don't have a ton of interest in the product itself or continuing to work on it, I'm just not gonna wanna market it. I'm just not gonna wanna write more code for it. It's just gonna end up being a dead project in a graveyard. Another idea I have is an AI lead generator or salesman. This is an idea that I've had for quite a long time, mostly because it was the first idea that popped into a lot of people's heads when they heard LLMs. But personally, 
To me, it's boring unless there's like some really technically complex part of it that is interesting. And I also just don't have an interest in, um, I just don't have an interest in the market in general. Right? I don't really care. I don't think it's like super useful. Um, in fact, I think it might actually just be a slot product um, unless it gives value to everybody involved. But personally, if an AI salesman was reaching out to me, I would get really mad. I also have another ed tech idea which is getting quizzed on topics by having it, having to explain it to an AI. Now, this is basically just me taking the idea from this existing app called Feynman AI. You can see it on the screen here. But the problem with this is if you're using voice, voice models are expensive. Whether you're using the 11 Labs API or whether you're using uh, ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, both of those APIs are expensive. And once you start, you know, like a minute of audio is probably a dollar. So there's no real subscription way to model this, right? Because if you're having a conversation with a model trying to explain something, that's gonna take like 10 minutes. And that's like $10, that is $10. And you can't just charge that to a student because that's gonna be really expensive. So maybe just build this out and wait for those prices to come down, launch it and then be like, ooh, it's awesome. But see, this is my problem. Every idea that I come up with, I can easily come up with several reasons that it won't work, and then that it doesn't discourage me, it just makes me bored of the idea. I need to have, my perfect idea does not necessarily need to have a big market. It just needs to be something that I'm really passionate about, or really care about, so that when I wake up, I'm really excited to work on it. Like right now, I'm really excited to work on this Pokemon AI, like this AI playing Pokemon project, but that's not, something that you could market, right? It's just for fun. I need to think of something that I will build and use constantly throughout the day. Because if I'm using it constantly, I'm gonna be wanting to work on it constantly. Okay, it is March 1st, 2025, which gives me the excuse to do something which is kind of stupid. I'm going to build and publish a side project every month from March 2025 to March 2026. This side project can be really complex, it could be really simple, but the goal here is to see what is going to gain traction. Now, if something starts to pop off in May, then I'm going to abandon the challenge and focus on the thing that is popping off. That's the idea. Be quick to build things and be quick to discard them when they're not working and maybe come back if they pick up traction in the future. If I am struggling to find an idea that really sticks out to me, then maybe I should just try a bunch of different things and see what gets traction. Now for ideas, I might do a few things. I might make kind of copycat, not necessarily copycats, let's say forks of apps in the app store that I think are doing something really well, but everything else is just kind of in affront to their users and try to improve upon that. There's gonna be a lot of things that'll help here. Frankly, I think my coding skills are fine. I've done a lot of coding up until now, I'm fine on that front. Where I kind of lack any experience or really skill is UI design. Things I make look kind of ugly and I want to improve on that. So I'll be able to improve on that front and I'll also be able to try and figure out how to market things really well. I've gotten a couple of million view reels um, for marketing some of my apps, but I, need, I can't do that consistently. I start to need to do that consistently. Another thing I might do is take a look at startups that have recently raised rounds and see if what they're doing is useful or if the market they're trying to solve a problem for is useful uh, or big and then I'll try and solve a similar problem in that same market or the same problem in a different market and see how things go. Otherwise, maybe one day I'll wake up and I'll have divine inspiration that just hits me in the head and then I can actually make a product based off that. But the goal is to learn a ton outside of my day job, which I love from nine to five. So maybe write a little bit of code in the morning, write a little bit of code after work. And the goal again, I don't know if I already mentioned this, two weeks of writing code, two weeks of marketing the product or starting to, you know, do one week of writing the code, three weeks of marketing the product. I don't know, but that is the idea from now on. The more I think about it, the more I begin to like that idea. So I think I might actually end this video here and then do a follow-up longer vlog detailing the start of the challenge and the first idea I pick for the month of March. So I will see you guys in that video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow along on the challenge, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.